Good morning, everyone. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO and co-founder of Vidovation. Today, I'm very excited to present uh, a live training session, a webinar. Uh, it's more than a webinar. When you're done, you will know uh, how you'll have a good start on how to uh, deploy, design, maintain uh, an enterprise IPTV and digital signage system. Today, we're concentrating on the, the broadcast, media, and sports markets, but uh, our, our television distribution systems could be used virtually anywhere. Any, uh, we do projects from uh, spanning from uh, Viacom CBS, which is now Paramount. Uh, we've done several Viacom facilities. We did the Paramount Studio facility, uh, two Nickelodeon facilities. We've done a bunch of casinos. So anywhere you, you need to distribute live media, whether that's direct TV, uh, cable, outside satellite feeds, internal feeds, feeds from your master control routing switcher that you wanna distribute throughout the plant. Uh, you know, it's very common that a VP of engineering at a TV station or a sports league if they want to see what's going on live in master control, they got to leave their office and go down the master control. So many times they'll set up like a little mini master control in, in the chief engineers or VP of engineering's office. But we don't have to do that. There can be one, two or several TVs uh, in the executive's office and we can bring master control to their office. In, uh, in a studio environment, we uh, uh, will bring stage feeds. So executives need to see what's going on on stage. So we'll bring those feeds to the executives desks. And uh, we'll also discuss during COVID, normally our IPTV systems are on campus. You know, we can go over the LAN, we can go over Wi-Fi, but it's really meant for when you're at work. Uh, during COVID, uh, executives uh, were working from home, so we'll discuss uh, the techniques we use to securely get those stage feeds, those internal feeds, sometimes highly sensitive feeds, so it's got to be secure, get those home, dual authenticate, authenticate who is actually watching the video, that it's a, not a bad guy or a bad person, so we'll get into all of this. So. Uh, 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 maybe your head will hurt a little bit when we're done, but uh, hopefully uh, you folks will find this uh, information uh, useful uh, in your day-to-day -day job. So let's go keep going here. So what are the key advantages? So uh, we all want to watch our video on a variety of devices. Uh, it's very common now, uh, even when you're on vacation, you know, you're at a hotel or a resort, uh, bring your own device. I want to watch on my own device. So it's not uncommon on, on these projects where uh, we have to stream to not only TVs, um, set-top boxes, but smartphones, tablets, et cetera. So, so uh, you know, we facilitate all of that. You know, sometimes we have to transcode to go to the different devices, but we'll get into that. And then uh, another common uh, uh, application is streaming to the desktop. So, you know, usually if it's an executive suite or office, there's room for a television on the wall, or there might be televisions in common areas, in lobbies, in break rooms, et cetera. Uh, so so uh, 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 that's pretty commonplace, you know, streaming to those devices, but streaming to the desktop, so if you're a media company or a sports league, we did Big Ten Networks, uh, or if it's a news organization or a financial institution, there is a business use case to watch TV at your desk. And uh, we'll bring television up in a browser so you can watch TV at the browser. And we tie into Active Directory, which I will get into more, to authenticate users at their desk. You know. Maybe you don't want everyone in the org watching ESPN, only the executives get ESPN, uh, uh, unless sports is part of your business workflow. So different channel lineups can be sent or authorized for different types of devices. 
uh, you probably wouldn't want sensitive content viewable in the lobby, for example. So the televisions in the lobbies in the public areas don't even have access to those channels. Those channels are for the executives or for the internal folks. Then it, it's very common these days now to, uh, I know in California and New York, it's even law that any television system has to be tied to life safety uh, systems in the building. So in other words, if there's televisions, they don't want people distracted watching TV and not realize there's a fire or, or there's an active shooter alert. So that it's mandatory that the TVs show uh, emergency alert information. And I'll go into this in more detail. Um, um, I'll take that a step further too. We can tie into the EAS system, you know, the city, state and government alert uh, uh, services to put, you know, amber alerts uh, up on the TVs if necessary. We, we do video on demand. In the corporate environment, usually the video on demand is the, the, the customer's videos, the corporate videos. They could be training videos. If it's a hospital, it could be training videos on sanitation and COVID, et cetera. If it's a uh, enterprise, HR could be pushing the latest uh, sexual harassment training videos, that kind of thing. And we even have analytics where we can check to see who's watched those videos. So, so the television department or the IT department can give uh, HR a list of who watched the video. You know, these employees all watched it. These watched half of it. These didn't watch it at all. So then an email can go out, hey, these people need to, to comply. They need to watch this video. Then we do Hollywood video on demand. That's like movies. And in the enterprise environment, nobody's doing like pay-per-view or watching videos. But if you're doing a, a hotel or an entertainment facility or hospitality of some sort, we do offer that, that capability as well. Uh, then we offer what we call PVR or personal video recording, which is essentially DVR, digital recording. And depending upon the application, we might record at the head end or we might record at the set top box. So we'll get more into that. Just want to give you guys a, a, an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, then you can't do a television system without an electronic program guide. So uh, based on your location and your zip code where we install the system, uh, based on the television content providers, uh, Vidovation, are, we are a premier DirecTV partner. We, we love working with DirecTV. We also work with Dish Network. We also work with cable. Uh, the nice thing when, when uh, I would say 90% of our applications, we, we, we'll do DirecTV and then maybe we'll do some over the air TV signals. I'll get into, I have a slide about over the air TV. But the reason why we like DirecTV is we're heavily involved. So if there's something wrong with, we actually provision your account for you. Then if there's a tech support problem, a billing problem, authentication problem, uh, uh, someone from our team doesn't have to tell accounting, well, you need to call your cable operator. We're not authorized to fix that on your cable account. With DirecTV, we're authorized. So we're your advocate. We set everything up. If something's not working right, we fix it. So it makes it more of a turnkey process. So, so we're your advocate. And if you have a DirecTV account uh, already, you just have to authorize video Vidovation as your DirecTV uh, agent. And uh, then we can work on your account and get things going for you. Uh, the system is very secure. I know these days security is a, is a big concern for everyone. Not only uh, is it secure from outside attacks, but it's in secure from, uh, from uh, uh, information leaving the building. And what do I mean by that? Uh, any, all the direct TV content, all the video content uh, in most applications is encrypted. Uh, it was mandatory in a lot of our, our projects, these internal feeds, these stage feeds be encrypted. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if it's a sound stage and uh, you're bringing uh, feeds from the sound stage to the executive's office, maybe that's an episode in a series that will air in a few weeks. If that leaks out, gets recorded, gets bootlegged, 
I, I mean, you've probably heard it in the news, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the grand finale of, uh, of uh, you know, a top show was ruined because uh, someone on set had a camera or their phone, you know, take it a step further. We want to make sure the television system is secure so that there's no, no breaches. Uh, many of our customers use the system for quality control. So uh, they're sending out video uh, over the top or to other distributors, cable, direct TV, et cetera. They can see what their feed looks like by bringing it back in. They can record. Um, so it gives them a, like a centralized uh, uh, management system. Uh, so so I, I mentioned this already. We're going to talk about how to stream uh, content off campus. Uh, one important thing to remember, though, when, when I'm talking about streaming off campus, this is the customer's content. We are not permitted to uh, stream DirecTV, DISH, or cable content off campus. The, the rule of thumb, the uh, uh, FCC rule of thumb is the streams cannot cross a public thoroughfare. Now, there's this is in the enterprise. DirecTV, AT&T, DISH all have streaming capability to supplement their satellite. Those are allowed to cross public streets but the enterprise streams are not allowed to cross public streets. So I think some of the rules that are in place, some of the restrictions are a little bit dated. And my understanding is the main reason why we're not allowed to cross public streets is Vidovation then starts to act like a cable operator. And a local cable company pays a franchise fee. They pay for the right to distribute television. television and in some cases, it's an exclusive right. So if we're moving video laterally, we're competing with a local cable company and the FCC says that's not fair. So uh, these rules and restrictions, that's our area of expertise. So you share with us what you wanna do. Um, if it's a college campus, let's say, and there's streets in between, if they're private streets owned by the university or owned by the media company, you know, say it's a, a ABC, in New York City, they want to go to a facility across the street. Well, that's a public street. We'd have to get special permission to bring the video across the street. Or we just have to put a second satellite dish on, on the adjacent building. That, you know, it's a simple problem. It's not super expensive. So there's a way around the, these types of problems. Uh, we can do um, uh, uh, up to, up to 5,000 endpoints. We can even do more. It's really just a Windows limitation. So uh, we've done projects with several thousand endpoints. If we hit more than 5,000, we just need a second server. And if you have that many endpoints, you probably want a second server anyway for redundancy. You don't want all your, uh, your whole system running off of, off of uh, one server. We can do HD, 4K, SD. Uh, we can ingest not every format of IP, IP video, we can't bring SMPTE 2110 in, it's too heavy. The, 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 the televisions, the set-top boxes, your browser can't decode a, a SMPTE 2110. That's a common question, a SMPTE 2110. But we can do MPEG 1, 2, 4, H.264, H.265, you know, your common video formats. And if you have video, either in SDI, we can uh, put encoders into the scope of work, to bring those into the system. It's not uncommon. So I mentioned Viacom and uh, Big Ten Networks, other media companies will put, uh, they'll designate a couple of outputs on their master control routing switcher. We'll feed those into some encoders we provide. Say there's uh, you know 10 channels uh, or, or there could be 10 feeds simultaneously that they might wanna bring into the television system. So the SDI comes out, hits an encoder, now those feeds are in the television system, the IPTV system. Uh, sometimes we do the reverse. Uh, in Big Ten Network, they wanted some of the direct TV video in the switcher. Uh, they, they needed to distribute it uh, inside the facility. Uh, 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 they had permission to use some of the content on the air. So they were pulling that into the system. So we can go both ways. And if something needs to be transcoded, encoded, decoded, uh, 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 encrypted, de-encrypted, Vidovation can handle all that for you. Uh, 
Let me see, let's keep going here. So uh, scalability, uh, security and flexibility. People ask us all the time too. We have a lot of software options. You know, if you want digital signage, it's a module. Um, if you want the emergency alert capability, it's a module. Uh, the modules by themselves are not super expensive, but if someone's not ready for signage yet, can always add it later. So it's very scalable. We try to keep our architecture as open as possible. Uh, we use uh, industry standard encryption. I I'll get into that. We use Proidium and Verimatrix. I'll get, I have a bad habit of jumping ahead to slide number 30. So I won't tell you all about encryption right here, but, uh, but th that's part of our, our scalability and flexibility. We have an open API uh, as part of our um, middleware, the, the, the software that controls an IPTV system, we commonly call that the middleware. That's the middleware. It's the, it's the, uh, the operating system that controls everything. It controls the endpoints. It controls the electronic program guide. Uh, it's just orchestrates everything, pushes updates to uh, uh, endpoints. You know, if a, if a set-top box needs a firmware update, it'll push that. You know, and you decide when updates are pushed, midnight, five o'clock in the morning, et cetera. It'll push changes to the electronic program guide. You know, as the day and hours go by, uh, shows fall off, new shows get added to the EPG, the electronic program guide. So it pushes that as well as maybe the channel lineup changes. Um, actually, our, our most common tech support call, it's not really a problem, but it's like, hey, I need CBS East. So when Viacom merged with CBS uh, 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 again, um, coincidentally, they needed a bunch of, you know, they need CBS East, CBS West. They needed CBS content now in their systems because CBS executives were joining the team, were moving into the building. So that's our number one tech support call. And we'll do it all for you. We'll, we'll uh, in that case, we'll go to the DirecTV Com 3000 tuner. Uh, if we have some spare tuners available, we'll find a tuner and switch it to CBS East, CBS West. Uh, if a tuner isn't available, we'll have to decide, well, what channel are we not watching? So the analytics of the system can determine that. Say, hey, nobody's watching this sci-fi channel. Well, now we're going to make that CBS East, and then uh, we will change the lineup that uh, uh, CBS East will go where sci-fi is. But, you know, CBS always starts at number two on any lineup, right? It's always first. Uh, I, I, I've seen that throughout the country. CBS is usually channel two, the top of the lineup. So they don't want it where the sci-fi channel is. So we can virtually move the channels uh, just because CBS is channel 3929-1 on direct TV. We can make it channel two. We can make it channel 64. We, we call the channels, they're really virtual channels. It, it's just a bunch of streams. We're just organizing them in a list and giving them channels. So when you're channel zapping up, down, up, down, you know, uh, you're going through the channel at channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, et cetera. So uh, uh, you buy a system or you design a system with innovation today and you're not ready for 4K. We're only ready for HD. Well, we've done systems where um, even recently we'll do 4K capability in the conference rooms and then in the break areas we'll do HD. Um, the only negative to that is you have to have both flavors of streams on the network. So uh, you'll have to have um, uh, your, your HBO channel in, in HD and 4K. There'll have to be two streams. We, the set-top box can't take a 4K stream and down convert it to HD. It's just not, not designed to do that. So theoretically, uh, we can have uh, uh, multiple copies. We can even have SD. Some channels, believe it or not, on DirecTV are still, uh, you know, some channels are broadcast only in SD still to this day. So there may only be SD. So we can make those choices when we're programming our content source, whether it's satellite, cable, or, or over the air, whatever that might be. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention something. So I talked about endpoints. I mentioned mobile devices, tablets, you know, smart devices. I mentioned set-top boxes. 
We like to, I'll get into it. We like to use amino and LG set top boxes, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why we use one over the other, depending upon the application. But I forgot to mention, we use hospitality grade smart TVs. Now, a common question we get, a customer will be like, hey, I got these really economical TVs. You know, I, I think they're, they're prosumer TVs. They're smart TVs. They're going to be compatible with the IPTV system. That's not the case. It has to be hospitality grade smart TVs. Um, not all, you know, the TVs are locked down. So we need, uh, if we're talking LG TVs, we need uh, uh, LG TVs that support the, what, the, what LG calls web OS. Um, and then if it's Samsung, we need Tizen support or HWeb support. Uh, Sony uh, often uses Android. So each, each, um, each of the major uh, television manufacturers has a hospitality line and most of the TVs, if not all, uh, were compatible with. And we were pre pleasantly surprised. We were brought into, um, so you think hospitality TVs, Jim, this is a, a broadcast media and sports uh, uh, webinar. Why would, I, why would you mention hospitality TVs? Well, never say never. Um, uh, Sinclair, uh, we, we, uh, Sinclair built a new uh, facility in Santa Monica uh, for the uh, merger of the uh, Tennis Channel, uh, the regional RS uh, sports networks, uh, so which now is the Tennis Channel and Bally Sports, you know, owned and operated uh, by, by Bally and Sinclair. Uh, Sinclair is, is very forward thinking. They, uh, you know, they, it's one less piece of hardware if you don't have a set-top box. They use hospitality-grade TVs. Uh, they are more expensive, but they, they usually have a longer warranty, and they're designed with a longer runtime. They got a longer mean time between failures. They're meant to be left on all the time. So in the Sinclair facility, I would say 95% of the televisions, uh, they had already deployed them, and then they brought us in to light them all up. Uh, they had hospitality grade. They had the Samsung TVs, so uh, uh, we were able to 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 uh, uh, integrate uh, Tizen uh, Tizen TVs uh, uh, into our IPTV television system. Uh, then we use Amino set top boxes, um, uh, or the Amino Kamai box, or LG boxes. Uh, again, you know, smartphones, tablets. Um, we can go over Wi-Fi, but that usually facilitates um, uh, uh, transcoding the HLS. Uh, you guys probably know how HLS works. You know, it, it, it'll adapt the bit rate. You know, it, 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 it makes several copies of the stream, you know, high, low, medium resolution uh, or, or a high, low, medium bit rate. And the streams are chopped into segments. So I'm on my on my cell phone watching on Wi-Fi. I move into kind of a Wi-Fi dead spot. The HLS will adapt so the video doesn't drop out. So HLS works really nice over Wi-Fi. One thing I'll get into, but I'll, I'll touch on it now, is 99% uh, of the time we're distributing the streams as multicast uh, as opposed to unicast. Uh, not that we're against unicast or we'll use a mixture, but the, the bulk of the streams, we like to have them uh, multicast. And the reason for that is if we, you know, take a Viacom facility, you know, we had a, a more than a thousand endpoints. If all those endpoints were unicast at any given point, well, if all a thousand TVs are on, uh, there would be a thousand streams. Uh, you know, unicast is a point to point uh, uh, protocol, as, as you guys know, uh, whereas multicast, we're limited, the, the maximum is the maximum number of channels. So a typical installation, the sweet spot is like we usually do about 48 channels, then maybe a couple of stage feeds, internal feeds. But so we'll have like 48 to 96 channels of direct TV uh, going to several thousand uh, endpoints. Uh, we'd have to have several thousand unicast streams. Well, if we have 48 channels, we only need 48 multicast streams. Isn't, you know, your IT department's gonna like 48 streams a lot better than a thousand or 2000 streams. But 
IT departments, you know, I, if we're going to do a project, uh, a lot of times the projects come in from operations or the market, if it's a casino or a hospitality, it's the marketing department maybe that outreaches to us. Sometimes it's the IT department, but we really recommend to avoid problems. We really need to get the IT department on board early, uh, earlier the better. And the fundamental thing we need to ask is, can you multicast your, 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 uh, 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 your network? Can, can we turn IGMP on? Uh, because uh, most networks out of the box, multicast is disabled. Now we've run into some organizations where multicast is just, uh, you know, InfoSec IT security won't allow multicast for whatever reason. Uh, and then we'll just go to a unicast system. You know, we'll, we'll have to set up a media server to stream out those several hundred, several thousand streams. Uh, so we might need a one or two extra appliances, but we certainly can do it. Um, some ID part, a multicast stream can be malicious if not set up properly. Uh, because it spawns, because it replicates itself, that's the beauty of it. You know, uh, it allow, you know, it, There'll be a stream of ESPN that will, you know, oh, uh, Bobby wants to watch it. Sue's computer wants it. It replicates it on all floors of the building, but it's a single stream. Well, you control it with the time to live, the TTL setting. So you limit how many hops the stream can go. So if something does go wrong, something gets corrupted, and the stream starts going rogue, it's ping-ponging around the network when it shouldn't the time to live will kill it. So it'll allow it to go several dozen hops and then it'll, it'll kill it. So there are safeguards to, to put the IT department at ease. So uh, this is one of our popular boxes, the Amino. Uh, we like the Amino uh, and the LG box or, the, or just the set-top boxes we use in general. Uh, a lot of times in, in, in computing IPTV systems, there are, the biggest complaint we hear is the reliability of set-top box. Um, a lot of set-top boxes are embedded computers with a spinning hard drive and a spinning fan. And a spinning hard drive and a fan has a couple of year life. If it's a harsh environment, you know, we'll, we've done stadium projects where some of these devices are outdoors. There's extra humidity being sucked in and out of the device. Uh, it may not even last the two or three years. So all of our devices are completely solid state. There, there's no hard drive. There, there's no spinning hard drive. There's no uh, fan. So we install these and they just go. They just run. They're very reliable. So you can see here on the slide, the H200 box will use if we're using VeraMatrix uh, encryption. Um, we'll use the... Um, uh, LG box if we're using a Proidium encryption. Uh, so why, why, why the different choices? Well, it really depends on, on your topology, your design. So if it's a more simplistic design, and by simplistic, I mean, we, we never intend to go to mobile devices. We don't intend to go to the desktop. Um, the, the, the tennis channel, Bally Sports, uh, on every floor, they, they, you know, in the big bullpen where the cubicles were, 30 TVs across one, you know, upper uh, edge of, uh, of each, on each floor in the bullpen, maybe 30 TVs. And then uh, they would be like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it would repeat one, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six feeds that people needed to see. Now, if somebody at, at, at one end of, of the, uh, uh, of the cubicle farm needed a special channel, um, uh, they can go into the system and, and change that channel on TV. Yeah, you know, there'd be usually like a little little sticker TV 32 or, or it's so like a floor, you know, two 30. So second floor TV 30, they go oh, two dot two 30. Let me go change that. So they could change that one TV from uh, from a from a web browser on their phone uh, using a tool we call the switcher. Um, we do uh, tie into third party, uh, you know, AMX, Crestron switching systems through our open API. We can tie into those systems. Or if you don't want uh, anything fancy like that, we have a very powerful uh, module we call the switcher. So a computer, a notebook, a tablet, 
uh, a PC, uh, any browser-based appliance, you go to a, a certain URL and uh, a web interface comes up. It has a list of all your channels, all your TVs, you know, down to the side of the, each side of the screen. TVs might be in groups. Um, so you, you can change channel on an individual TV, change channel on an on a individual group. Um, so it's very powerful. So, so uh, we'll, in, a, in a simpler design where we don't anticipate going to the desktop or uh, so in the case of Sinclair, uh, we used LG because uh, um, we, we were keeping the streams in their native Pro Idiom. Uh, Pro Idiom is the encryption that uh, is default uh, with DirecTV and it's default with uh, Dish Network and it's now become default in the cable industry. So we don't need to turn off encryption and re-encrypt. It's just a simpler design. So if you don't have ProIdium enabled TVs, you don't have hospitality ProIdium enabled TVs, uh, you would use the LG ProIdium set-top box, the LG STB 6500. Now, if it's a more complicated design or, or you know, a design where we're going to mobile devices, we're going to the desktop, uh, decrypting ProIdium at the desktop is problematic. It's, it, it, you, know, you don't have enough horsepower. Uh, same thing on the phone. So what we will do is DirecTV and DISH will, we will get permission from DirecTV and DISH to turn off encryption because we're going to authenticate with Verimatrix as our, our partner that we're, we're going to re-encrypt everything with Verimatrix or re-encrypt everything with ALS. I'm sorry, uh, AES. So, so, uh, um, so Verimatrix will come into the mix on, on a more a multi, multi-platform endpoint kind of configuration. So like at the Paramount Studios lot, people want to watch stage feeds on their phones. Um, um, uh, Pro, ProIdium doesn't work well. The native streams don't work well over Wi-Fi. So we have to transcode to HLS, uh, encrypted HLS, so we need the video in the cleared in order to do that. So we'll help you make those decisions. Even if you're not sure, you know, hey, Jim, you know, at some point in the future, maybe we want to stream to the desktop. Then let, let's, let's go with the Verimatrix approach. Let's go with the Amino set-top box so we're not boxed in uh, 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 later on. So we'll help you with those types of decisions. So, you know, here's, here's the protocol, the... the 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 the, the Tizen OS support for the Samsung TVs, uh, the Web OS, the LG Web OS, we support that. We support Sony. Uh, there's a myriad of other hospitality brands of TVs. Um, 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 so uh, you know, here's a typical. We we kind of mimic the the look and feel and operation to uh, how your television works at home. You know, a similar EPG, the electronic program guide that you would have at home. Um, all of this is HTML5, so it's customizable. You know, hey, Jim, I, I see you have the channel summary on the left and then a little little uh, moving thumbnail on the right. I want that flipped or I want the grid at the top. Anything you see on here can be uh, 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 modified. We can change the look, the feel. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times... Um, we just copy the, the color palette, uh, fonts, look and feel from the customer's website and mirror that in the television system. Um, you know, you can imagine some of the Nickelodeon facilities we've done. It's more whimsical. Um, they had the orange and greens um, and Nickelodeon's famous for their green slime, right? You know, for those of you who have kids out there, you know about the green slime on Nickelodeon. So there's orange with the green slime kind of dripping down. That's the graphic. Whereas Viacom corporate is, 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 is like blue, black, and silver, more, more serious, more corporate looking. So we can change that or we'll, we'll, we'll change it for you or we'll teach your marketing department how to do it. Um, sometimes, um, you know, like a, a media company is trying to internally promote a new show they're working on or a new initiative. I know like Viacom is a very green company. So 
Uh, they might want, you know, graphics that pop up, you know, don't forget to recycle that, that kind of thing. So anything, any kind of messaging, either uh, blatantly with signage can be pushed or more subtly as the, as the, as the wrap to the, to the, to the system, you know, the, the look, the feel, the palette, and even some subtle imagery or text in the background that can be added in. So, so typically, you know, we do a, a linear lineup like, uh, like any other television system. Uh, it's easy to deploy. We do, you know, 99% of the heavy lifting. We program everything. Our team will come out. Some, some systems, uh, the customer wants it all turnkey. You know, so innovation, you're going to do every TV. You're going to do every endpoint. Typically, another contractor hangs the TV. Other contractors, uh, if, they're, if it's a new installation, they'll build the network. So you typically, we arrive, the TVs are already hanging on the wall and plugged in, but we can do more than that. We can, we can hang the TVs as well. Uh, but most of the time, it's a, that's a separate AV contractor. We're brought in to build the IPTV head end, uh, put the satellite dish on the roof, uh, deploy the set-top boxes or program the TVs. Uh, so a lot of times we're a subcontractor, the prime uh, contractor, or uh, in some cases we're the prime, we just turnkey the whole thing. So what, whatever you want to do. And we, we encourage your team to work alongside us. Uh, what better way to train them than to install everything together? Um, some customers want to do most of the installation themselves, or they have another crew, or the prime contractor is going to do that. We'll be on site to, to help deploy, to train your team, your prime contractor's team, whatever the cases may be. Uh, uh, we, we will adapt to, to your needs. Uh, I think some of this is a little redundant. Just some screenshots. You know, you can see the different types of uh, uh, EPGs. Uh, so yeah, I talked about this. So, so digital rights management, everyone's like, uh, oh, why is DirecTV so, so stringent on, on encryption? And, and uh, uh, it's not coming from them. It, it's uh, many of you folks listening today are content creators, right? You know, as a content creator, you, you want your content protected. If it gets bootlegged, et cetera, that, that's a loss of revenue. So it, really these, these laws and these, these rules come from the studios, come from the content creators and Vitovation nor our customers wanna be held liable. So we're guaranteeing that everything will be encrypted. We're doing everything we can possible to maintain security. Uh, DirecTV needs to make sure uh, we're keeping everything secure, but we're trained by DirecTV, you know, being a premier uh, partner, that's part of it. Uh, um, they trust us that we're gonna keep everything encrypted. Now, we're not the encryption police. If we're on site and, hey, where are those videos going? Are those encrypted? I see nothing, you know, we are just worried about our system. You know, we're not gonna, um, that's not our job. Um, if another vendor came in and did something wrong, we might make some, some suggestions. Now we're never going to deploy a system that does not comply. That we that we will not do. So if we're putting a system in, we're going to uh, uh, put the appropriate uh, encryption, the appropriate digital rights management in. Uh, we'll help you choose whether it's Proidium, Verimatrix, uh, AES, etc. Uh, we can we can support virtually any any standard of um, encryption. Um, another acceptable form of encryption is watermarking. Uh, the, um, it depends on the type of content, some, some content. This just allows um, when something is stolen, it puts fingerprints on it to see where it was stolen from, but it doesn't prevent the theft. So this is kind of uh, uh, forensic uh, uh, use as opposed to a preventative use. So certain types of content um, also, DirecTV, if we transcode content, now it's not a first generation anymore. Granted, we all know you transcode something or re-encode something, it's going to be a little softer. The fidelity may go away, but you know, most people may not even notice. If it's a second generation, then uh, encryption may not be necessary or watermarking may be enough 
again, these are some of the solutions will help you, some of the decisions that will help you make along the process. Uh, uh, Active Directory, dual authentication. So we have uh, an LDAP module that, uh, uh, again, I mentioned these software modules, you know, can be turned on. And uh, our professional services team will work with your Active Directory IT team to integrate uh, the systems. And why, why would Active Directory integration be needed? Well, it's needed at the desktop. So use me as an example. I'm a mid-level employee. I'm allowed to watch certain media content. I'm a sports analyst, so I'm allowed to watch FS1, ESPN, but um, they don't feel it's appropriate for me to watch shows that are being recorded for being to be aired later that week. They're afraid something might leak out. So those stage feeds are not available to me in my lineup. And how does the system know that? I logged into my computer with Active Directory, then the television system knows, oh, this is Jim Jaquetta. He's only allowed to watch, uh, the, you know, tier two of television. Tier one includes some of those sensitive channels. That's for executives. So when the exec, if an executive is at his desk and he or she logs in, uh, they know, okay, they can see tier one. They can see all the content. If it's a TV in their, in their office, when we uh, set up that TV, when we activate that TV, uh, we put a room number in there, and then that room number is assigned to a certain tier that that can see tier one content as opposed to tier two. Then maybe TVs in public spaces, lobbies, hallways, break areas, maybe that's tier three, which then has another uh, limitation, maybe even less channels. So all of this is programmable. TVs, uh, employees, uh, TV, set-top boxes, any endpoint can be moved between groups, moved between tiers. All of that is programmable. So many customers love this module. Uh, uh, the um, uh, Paramount Studios, uh, we, we implemented uh, Active Directory. So some of this is, uh, uh, I don't want to go on for two hours. I was joking at the top of the call that I have a bad habit of going on for three hours. Some of you may like it, but you know it is a work day today. So uh, 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 let me just kind of pick, I think I mentioned most of this. Uh, oh, uh, important thing, when we talk about the desktop, we support both Mac and PC. Uh, a lot of media companies, right? Your creatives prefer the Mac over PC. So we support both. So that, that's a good, uh, good feature that we have. Uh, let's see, yeah, I think I covered a lot of this. Let me jump into this slide. So this was interesting. So. End of 2019, I want to say the end of summer, maybe early fall of 2019, uh, we rolled out our television system at, at the Paramount Studio lot. Um, I don't know if you've been to some of these studios or even Paramount before we, we came onto the scene. Uh, it was almost comical. You would see, you know, the trailers for the talent in, in the driveways, et cetera, in the parking lots, each with a satellite dish then you would see a dozen satellite dishes across the roof of, of the sound, sound stage. So, you know, I, I'm sure you folks are familiar with how a lot, a, a lot works is some of, some of the facilities are used by Paramount, but a lot of times it might even be what you would consider a competing network or competing studio rents a sound stage from Paramount. So some of it's a mixture. Uh, some of the people on, on campus are Paramount Viacom employees, and some of them are tenants. So employees, when they're on their computer logging in, that's Active Directory. But if I'm a tenant, I'm on my own island of a network. I'm not connected to the Viacom uh, Paramount corporate network. So Active Directory doesn't really apply. So we have to kind of maintain both worlds. Uh, we maintain a user or an endpoint database of what, what endpoints can watch what channels. We tie that into Active Directory. So we'll have a, a, a list of Active Directory endpoints and a list of end user endpoints. So it, it, it's kind of two, the, the merger of a, kind of like almost a public or tenant viewing versus corporate employee viewing all in the same campus. Uh, so... 2019, we, we fire up the system very successfully. 
Uh, Dr. Phil is a big tenant on the on the lot at Paramount, and uh, you know stage feeds distributed on campus. So an exec is is watching the stage feed, but then wants to go over to the commissary to grab something for lunch, but doesn't want wants to keep watching. Brings it up on his or her phone, can keep watching. You know, okay, it looks looks like they're shooting. You, you know how it is in production, right? Time is money. You, you know. Depending upon your production, it might be 50 grand to 100 grand an hour just to have the lights on. You know, the union people have to be on call, the craft services, et cetera. Uh, they want to see, okay, I, it looks like they're shooting. I'm going to go eat lunch. They're, they're watching. They got it in their earbud. Oh, wait, wait, there's something wrong. Let, let me text somebody. Hey, why you guys stop? So, so contiguously, they can jump to their phone and keep watching. COVID strikes. Now, everything was shut down for, for a month or two, but uh, April, May of 2020, hey, Dr. Phil wants to come back online. You know, we, we got these strict COVID protocols. We, we want to minimize the number of people uh, in, in, in the studio. Um, so a lot of executives stayed home. So we had to rush and implement uh, off-lot streaming, and we had to do it securely. Now, uh, Paramount Viacom really likes Okta dual authentication. So we integrated with Okta to authenticate. So when someone logged into the portal, uh, uh, in case their username and password was stolen or misplaced, they were dual authenticated with Okta. So then we know, okay, then uh, something would be pushed to the Okta app. Yes, I am Jim Jaquetta. I am an executive Paramount. Boom. Okay, I can watch the stream. Now, Remember I mentioned direct TV content can't be moved off campus across public streets. So we were, we were not allowed to move direct TV or ESPN to the executive's home, but they can watch that on their own TV. You know, so they have access to that through another means. So direct TV, but the stage feeds belong to the studio or in some cases they belong to Dr. Phil. So Paramount and Vinovation were chartered with the task of getting those Dr. Phil stage feeds securely off campus and home. So you can see here um, inside, you know, we got encoders, uh, IGMP stage feeds, uh, feeding a transcoder HLS. And you see um, to the right here, clear a uh, HLS, AES going to mobile devices. And then we hand off to an HLS server on the outside of the firewall, actually in a DMZ. See these two orange lines. The top orange line is the firewall, the, the bottom orange line, inside those two orange lines, the DMZ. Then, you know, we didn't want to expose our primary server to the outside world. So these, these two de orange devices, servers on the bottom are mirroring the servers inside. So uh, if there is an attack, we're not exposing the inside uh, system. So it added an extra layer of, of security. And then uh, Octa dual authentication was, uh, wrapped up in this. So this was very powerful. And, you know, and when Viacom, uh, when Paramount called, they're like, we're like, well, okay, yeah, we can definitely do this. We've done this before. Uh, it's right in our wheelhouse. Well, let me ask, when do you need it? Well, we needed it three weeks ago. So, you know, it took us a good couple of weeks, maybe a month to, you know, we did a lot of testing, you know, we, we really needed to make sure that it was secure. Uh, you know, the, the, the Paramount's like, let, we don't want to rush it. So, you know, we rolled it out slowly, did a lot of testing, but, you know, inside of a month, we had it up and running and the execs were very happy. They didn't have to come into the studio. They could watch from home. Uh, these are some drawings of a, a typical building blocks of, of a head end. Uh, um, co the COM 3000, DirecTV, and even... Um, a QAM to IP gateway device. You know, QAM is essentially uh, an IP stream wrapped in QAM modulated RF. The payload is IP. Direct TV, the payload is IP. So uh, we don't really need encoders. You know, the old school approach was, uh, I actually have a slide. Let me, let me, let me I think actually, let us see while I'm on that subject. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the old school approach was like this. You either had 100 set-top boxes, cable boxes, or 100 satellite receivers. Then below it, just below that is a, is a row of um, encoders. So if you're in the encoder business building an IP, this is early IPTV, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago. 
Uh, if you were in the encoder business, this was great. You could sell the customer a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of encoders. Well, we save you that money. We don't, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, uh, if the content is coming in the building, uh, it, it's wrapped, uh, you, you know, it comes off the um, DirecTV as IP already. Why bring it back to baseband and then re-encode re it? You're stepping on the video a second time. It's, of course, that's going to, ruined fidelity. So these five or six, eight foot racks now we can get into about 12 or 14 rack units. So it's, uh, it's a very, very economical uh, in space savings. So let me just back up here a little bit. So uh, we can use a variety of encoders for stage feeds. We have certain brands that we like. We're, we're fans of, uh, of uh, open gear and cobalt. Um, one of our prime uh, vendors, Avi West, our bonded cellular vendor, got bought by High Vision. Uh, we're, we're learning more about the High Vision. We've just been trained on the High Vision product. They got some amazing uh, product. Uh, High Vision are the, are the inventors of SRT, as most of you probably know. So we can, we can work, uh, you know, again, depart, depending upon the needs. If it's more of a, a a corporate environment that doesn't use SDI, for example, we have some low cost encoders with HDMI input uh, to put in the head end. So uh, I mentioned DVRing a recording or time shifting is very important. You know, we're, we're doing some IPTV head ends overseas. So, you know, shows that will, uh, the prime time is three o'clock in the morning overseas, we need the time shift those shows so they hit prime time locally. So in that case, we're DVRing everything and delaying it, you know, nine, 10, 12 hours, whatever the case may be to get it to hit pr uh, prime time. Um, you can store in our server. Uh, typically our server has two terabytes of storage. It's very common now that um, our customers don't want us putting a server in. They wanna do everything with VM. Uh, virt virtual servers. So then the storage becomes the customer's uh, uh, requirement. You know, the, the customer will provide the necessary storage for a DVRing uh, or personal recording, or we can hit any storage device that's visible on the network. So if you have a storage array and you have a certain folder on that storage array for uh, IPTV DVR purposes, as long as that folder is uh, uh, visible to us, um, we, we, can, we can dump our recordings there and dump them encrypted and securely. I mentioned video on demand. We can integrate your own content, uh, Hollywood content, you know, pay-per-view if you need it. But most of the time, this is, uh, you know, we're, you guys are media companies, right? You have an asset library. Some customers have brought all or most of their asset library uh, into the television system. So writers, producers, you know, it's very, I learned this from, from working with Nickelodeon that um, in the writer's room, they're thinking of a new idea for a show and they're like, you know, uh, we're working on episode 300 here, but this really sounds familiar. Didn't we do this same theme in episode 100? Go to the video on demand, find the recording of episode 100 and watch it. Hey guys, yeah, we are repeating ourselves. We need something new. So having your assets, even your media uh, sports league or, or your Big Ten network or tennis channel, you have games that happened overseas that happened uh, while you were sleeping. You wake up in the morning, you come into work. Now you need to watch those events and then commentate on them. Uh, write your article about it or, or commentate. Uh, write the script for the, for the sports segment later that day. Uh, so streaming, adaptability, uh, I mentioned all this, you know, MPEG 1, 2, 4. I don't know, why do we skip MPEG 3? We went 1, 2, we skipped 3, went to 4. Uh, H.264, H.265. Um, I think I covered a lot of this. Um, here's a closer shot of, of the head end. This is what a typical head end of ours looks like. So uh, for, let me go from the bottom up. At the bottom... This is some of the RF plumbing that uh, accompanies the uh, DirecTV COM 3000. Um, a lot of cases we put this plumbing on a wall in the back of the data center or the IDF closet. 
um, we, we typically require like a, a three foot by three foot piece of plywood mounted to the wall. It's typically where like phone equipment or, or fire alarm equipment in a, in a data center is usually mounted to the wall, but you don't, you don't drill right into the concrete, right? You got that cardboard. We, we, we will, we'll, we'll want that set up. Uh, we'll need a grounding bar. So when the satellite coax has come into the building, want to make sure those are grounded. We don't want lightning getting into the rack. So we, we spell out the requirements that we need in order to deploy. So in this particular case, this rack maybe was in the middle of the data center. So we were far from the wall. So we just put it on a shelf. So just put some of the RF plumbing on a shelf, got some AC power management. And then the light blue box is the, the COM3000. Uh, the COM3000 can do IP out and QAM at the same time. Uh, QAM, it can do 138 channel output. IP, it can do slightly less. It can do 120 channels. So, so this slide that I showed you here, uh, 120 channels would take five or six racks and, and, and 120 encoders. And an encoders can be anywhere from Fifteen hundred to five thousand dollars for you know from a pro version to a broadcast version. That's that's a lot of money. So this three rack, this unit right here, these three rack units replace those six eight foot racks or five or six eight foot racks. We can do one hundred and twenty channels of IP output direct TV from here, either encrypted in Proidium or we get Proidium turned off. It comes out in the clear. And then we encrypt with Proidium. Uh, then uh, uh, stage, I, I believe this is the Paramount Studios head end. Uh, we use Cobalt encoders to encode the uh, stage feeds. Uh, stage feeds came into the, um, uh, actually there's some encoders in this chassis and there's some fiber optic extenders in here. So they brought, uh, they use SDI, we used SDI fiber optic extenders from the sound stages to bring the SDI to the head end and then in the same rack converted it to IP and then we bring that into the IP uh, system. I mentioned Paramount needed, you know, desktop, smartphone, uh, computers, set-top boxes, et cetera. So we went with Verimatrix encryption. So normally we only do one server. Uh, it's one or two servers at most. These could have been virtualized. Um, the first server is our IPTV middleware. The second server is our Verimatrix encryption. So that's why there's two. So the stage feeds are fed into the Verimatrix server, which I believe is the one on the bottom. The IP feeds, the clear IP feeds coming out of the COM3000 are fed into Verimatrix as well. So nothing leaves this room unencrypted. The IP streams uh, are encrypted. Uh, then I mentioned the top server, that's the brain, that's the IP TV middleware that manages all the endpoints, all the set-top boxes. And then the top appliance was, is typically provided by the customer. This is an uplink switch. So you see all these uh, LAN connections on the left, that's hooked to all the assets below it. And then the two fiber cords going out to the right, we want our IP streaming traffic, our multicast IP traffic, we want it fed directly to the core switch. So the core switch is in another room or another part of the data center. So that's where these fibers are going to. So you see here by, by not having those six racks of set top boxes and encoders, we save anywhere from 50 to $350,000 in encoders. We're saving on rack space, we're saving on electricity costs, HEVC costs. Uh, uh, you name it, you know, less moving parts. It's, it's uh, you see here, there's three blades in here. There, there's room for six. Each blade does uh, 20 channels. There's 20 direct TV tuners per blade. Uh, it's amazing, the density. And there's a similar appliance for DISH network. Uh, direct TV uh, uses a Technicolor box called the COM3000. DISH network uses their box is red, a red box called the smart box. Uh, the smart box is a little bigger. The COM 3000 is three rack units. The smart box, I believe is four. Uh, so I covered this. So here's kind of the workflow or the signal flow from uh, the roof to the COM 3000. 
So we typically put the dish on the roof. Um, we ask that the, the customer or the landlord of the building the customer is in, um, they, they put a, a roof penetrating conduit in. Um, Vidovation will never drill through someone's roof. We don't want the liability for a leak. So we recommend the customer, whoever puts the conduit in should be whoever has the warranty on the roof. So then if a leak does happen, we don't void the warranty. Say, well, you, you have the warrant, you, you know, you installed the conduit, you have the warranty for the roof. If there's a leak, you need to repair it. So that's what we recommend. Most of our customers are media companies already. They have GPS antennas on the roof, other satellite equipment on the roof, radios, telemetry, microwave. Uh, there's usually a conduit for us to use. If not, uh, Paramount is a union facility. They had the union put a nice big fat conduit in for us from the data center to the roof of the data center. So we put the satellite dish on the roof of the data center. Then uh, we usually bring a minimum of four, uh, DirecTV recommends two spares. So we'll bring six coaxes and ground down from the roof. We'll uh, have a grounding bar to, to stop any lightning. Then uh, we have a polarity locker, an AGC amp, uh, a tap for distribution, and then, uh, we have this swim technology of DirecTV. What that does is it makes every transponder, every channel visible to every tuner. Uh, I don't know if you remember like, you know, 20 years ago, like in your home, if you had multiple TVs, um, if your wife was watching certain, certain channel downstairs, you couldn't see a channel upstairs because you were on a, a, a different transponder. Uh, all, the, all that's done with now, you know, any tuner can see any channel, the technologies has solved all those problems. So we, we install all of this for you uh, uh, in the data center. You can see here, Nickelodeon one facility uh, didn't want the antenna visible from the roof. So we kind of tucked it away. Um, what do they call it? It's like a vanity wall that goes around the HVAC gear. So we were able to kind of mount the dish inside the lip of the wall and then uh, still get uh, our south easterly. Uh, uh, basically, we, we're aiming for Texas or, or the Caribbean. The satellite dishes are over the Caribbean. So wherever we are in the world, you know, if we're on the west coast, we're aiming like uh, south uh, easterly, uh, south southeast probably. And then on uh, you know New York east coast, we're probably aiming uh, uh, south uh, southwest. Uh, you know, basically aiming towards Texas. And then you're like, what's that funny antenna above it? Well, that's pointed at Mount Wilson. We, that's the satellite dish bringing in uh, over the air TV signals. So we have an, a nice appliance that can bring in eight over the air TV signals. And it's a good idea to bring in some ATSC. There, there might be some hyper local channels that are not available on DirecTV or DISH. Um, we've done projects where we brought DirecTV, DISH, cable, and over the air. Uh, you know, there were certain cable channels that they needed on the network. Uh, there were certain channels uh, uh, not available on DirecTV that they needed from DISH. Believe it or not, on the Nickelodeon installation, the Nickelodeon music channel is not available on DirecTV. And I'm like, they're like, hey, Jim, you need to fix that. It's like, you guys are the content owner. You need to sell that to DirecTV. That's not my job. So we had to put a, a DISH network receiver in just to get the Nickelodeon uh, uh, music channel for the Nickelodeon music execs at corporate. Um, so we, we can mix all the above together. And then the nice thing about over the air, I'm, I'm sure most of you know, if you want the best looking picture, you go over the air. Um, you know, the satellites are very limited in bandwidth. So um, it's a pretty heavily compressed signal. So it's funny that like, um, um, I think CBS West, we were getting uh, over the air. You know, we were going to KCBS, right? Look beautiful. They're like, why does KCBS East not look as sharp? Well, that's coming through DirecTV. It's got more compression because the satellite has limited bandwidth. Same thing with cable. You know, cable doesn't have infinite bandwidth. Neither does over the air, but over the air, I mean, unless you're, you're um, multicasting, you know, many, many channels, Usually the primary channel on over the air is uh, uh, at 19.4 megabits per second or close to it. And an ATSC uh, over the air TV signal at 19 megs 
uh, HD looks real nice. So you might want, if there's certain channels that you want a little extra quality, that's a great way to bring it into the system with an over the air uh, tuner. So you know, that's the beauty of our system. You know, we can support, there's systems out there that don't do Proidium, that don't do Verimatrix. So we support all the forms of encryption. We can theoretically, we haven't met a, a content provider or a form of content we couldn't bring into a system. We support all your choices of content. I mentioned this uh, earlier that in the case of cable TV, we have a QAM to IP uh, 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 appliance uh, that's uh, um, uh, four rack units high and can bring in 60 channels. So in the way that the COM 3000 tunes 120 channels of direct TV, this is not quite as dense. It can do up to 60 channels of cable TV. So you feed RF QAM in the back of it and it spits out IP and it's compatible with ProIdium, compatible with Verimatrix. It's compatible with the uh, decryption uh, cards uh, 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 that the cable industry uses. So I touched on this, you know, we integrate live internal and studio feeds into the system. Uh, so, uh, you know, even in the corporate environment, you know, hey, I don't have the studio. Uh, it's not uncommon for the CEO or the, or the senior management to do uh, a town hall session, broadcast live to the troops. Uh, uh, if they're at work, uh, it'll be on the television system. If they're at home, it can, like today, it could be bridged over to Zoom. Uh, it's actually come, become very common where we bridge the two worlds together. Um, you know, we can take feeds from the IPTV system, convert them to NDI, and Teams, Microsoft Teams supports NDI. I believe Zoom supports NDI now. So any, any feed can be brought into a conferencing system as a virtual camera. Uh, if, it's, uh, uh, if we use an SDI to, H, uh, to USB uh, capture device, and as long as the driver for that capture device can emulate a virtual camera, we can bring any video into the, into the, the Zoom or the conferencing world. So we can um, uh, integrate with conferencing systems. I talked about the emergency alert systems. You know, when there's a fire, the system knows where the TV is. We can get very granular where the TVs at the end of the East Hall have a map to the exit. The TVs at the, at the uh, East end of the hall it's a different, a different, a different staircase you got to go down. You see, we can have a little graphic of where to exit the building. So we can get really granular of what to do, you know, active shooter, you know, and put the procedures on the wall, hide in place, barricade the wall, get under your desk, don't move, don't breathe, uh, don't call for help, you know, be, you know, the instructions for whatever the emergency might be, tornado, if you're in a, the tornado belt, all that information could be pushed in an emergency to the television assistant. Uh, and an announcement can even be pushed uh, out of the television system. Uh, I mentioned the switcher. So this that's the web-based system to control everything. You can of course control everything from the back end, but that person usually needs to be a little bit more technical. Like they could get into trouble, they could break something. We do have different levels of access. Like we have a designer access level where that person can uh, only access like digital signage things. They can't break the channel lineup. So we do have some safeguards, but if you want end users or a manager or even a non-technical person to give them the ability simply uh, to control, we recommend the switcher module, uh, which gives you about browser-based control. Uh, let me see, talked about integrating with conferencing. I touched on this digital signage. We can do pretty much all the bells and whistles of, of any signage system. Um, uh, sometimes um, uh, a customer, they're like, you know, Jim, I know your signage system is better, more powerful, but our team is used to brand X, they're trained on it. We don't wanna switch. So we make some signage channels. Um, uh, the beauty of, getting signage from Vidovation, we can easily merge signage with live TV. So in other words, if you have a TV in the lobby and you want ESPN live or CNN or Fox News Channel live, we can do an L bar around it. We can have active zones. We can even have little media clips rolling. 
So uh, whereas if, if it's a separate system, that system may not be able to support live, the integration of live video, but there's ways around that, you know? So, so you know, a, a common thing we'll do is like channel zero is the, cha is the signage lineup and TVs on the, on the campus floor that are supposed to show signage uh, will uh, remotely tune them to channel zero and lock them on channel zero. No one can change that. So no one will even know that that signage player is not not part of the, the Vidovation system. What we do is we take the HDMI output of your signage player and put a, an HDMI encoder behind it and then bring that in. Um, um, so so uh, 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 the sky is the limit, but we do recommend using our system. Uh, I'll give you another example. A customer had a, a, another brand signage behind every TV. They had hundreds of these players. Now they want to add television. Oh, well, what do I do with all my players? And, and I don't want to uh, uh, throw them all out. And, I, and again, I, we still want to use the players. So I said, well, how many unique zones of signage do you have at one time? Oh, five or six. So we went from 100 players to just six players. We put those six players at the head end, fed them into HDMI encoders and brought them in as channels. So they're, they're, we can integrate with existing systems, legacy systems, we'll adapt to your needs. Uh, ticker overlay, uh, you know, this is kind of like um, a baby version of signage. Maybe you don't want the whole signage thing. This could be used for alerts, you know, tornado warning, uh, fire, um, um, any kind of internal, or it could be a little crawl. Uh, don't forget in the commissary to, to get your flu shot today or uh, flu shot in the, in the health department today, or uh, today's uh, the, the blue plate special in the commissary is meatloaf, you know, whatever it might be. I always talk about food. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. And you see, you make it go across the bottom, the top, you have some control over it. Uh, analytics, I mentioned, this would be helpful if you want to know what channels people are watching. Like say, uh, you know, you are limited to the 120 channels, but there's 200 channels of direct TV. So you got to pare it down and there's a constant struggle. You know, what channel? Oh, no one's watching the history channel. Great. Let's put something else in there. Or in the example where I mentioned HR needs to know if people watched a certain training video, these analytics could come into hand. Uh, I kind of touched on this. The whole environment is uh, uh, controlled with style sheets. It's just like a website. You know, it's HTML5, everything. You know, you can see on the top, it's a more busy interface of a hotel. You know, there's guest services. Viacom, it's just, you know, uh, blue, white, and, and, and black, very corporate, just one button television. Uh, there could be a video on demand button. All of this could be changed. You know, if you want this to look a certain way, certain look and feel, it's 100% compatible. I mentioned this before too, our system can support H SD, HD, 4K, or a mixture. You can always add 4K capability later. Um, some customers, you know, want uh, to integrate some of the property management security cameras into the system. As long as they're MPEG one, two, or four, they can be brought in and, you know, obviously you don't want employees watching this, you know, maybe some of these cameras are in sensitive areas that, you know, employees shouldn't be watching, but you can distribute these to the VP of security, the VP, you know, anyone in the security department can watch these uh, security feeds in the system. Um, in sporting venues, it's important that there's low latency from the camera, the, the on-campus camera, encoder and the set-top box. What do I mean by that? So you're in a VIP suite and you're watching a baseball game, someone hits a, a home run, we can get the latency as low as half a second, you know, glass to glass. So we can't get it to zero, uh, but a half a second is pretty good. So home run, you look up at the TV, a split second later, now you see the home run again. So you, you could argue a little bit of latency is good that you can, you can see the home run uh, real quick. You know, a lot of times, you know, in VIP suite, you're kind of elevated looking down at the field and then slightly up on your eye line are the TVs. So if the TVs were like, uh, some of our competing systems are, you know, uh, uh, a second or two behind. That's a little off-putting. Or it's very off-putting if they're out of sync with each other. 
that will look weird. And then if there's live speakers, the audio is all playing. So we keep the channels in sync, the TVs in sync with each other and minimize the latency. Um, we don't want to do this to your IT guy, you know, your IT department or guys and gals. Um, um, we got to bring them into the conversation early, keep them happy. Uh, we give you some network planning guides, um, you know, some, some a little cheat sheet on IGMP, uh, uh, you know, your internet group, multicast protocol, how to set that up. We'll work with your team. Um, on, on many installs, we need a DNS record added. Why do we need that? So our, our set-top boxes will look for iptv.vidovation.com as the server. Well, on your corporate network, that URL is meaningless. We need a DNS record resolving vidovation.iptv.com to the actual physical address of the middleware server. Um, if, if we've had some customers, no, we don't do DNS records. We just don't do that. We don't, or we don't like that. Well, we then have to code the, the DNS uh, IP address into every server, which is doable. We've done it. Um, I've been on site with my team where we had a thousand endpoints. We had to key that all in manually. And that, you know, that's just the way the customer wanted. That was the rules of the network. So, well, you know, there, there's the typical way we do it. And then there's your way we do it. We'll do it your way, however you guys want it. So, you know, more, more little cheat sheets on, uh, you know, typically for network planning, direct TV streams average eight megs, you know, like your CNN, your talking head is like at four megs your sports or your or channels might be 12. We say an average of eight. So, you know, uh, you, we wanna make sure you have enough backbone capacity on your network to support the multicast streams. So we help you with that, with that planning. Um, I believe uh, Fallon distributed uh, uh, an ebook we have on our Nickelodeon and Viacom uh, deployments. Uh, Here's some pictures now, my, my wife didn't believe me. So Viacom is a great place. So um, I've gone uh, you know, on a morning to do some maintenance and certain days of the week in the morning, they put out a breakfast, spread. again, I'm back to the food, a breakfast spread, uh, egg, you know, egg burritos. Uh, then on, on, on special occasions on Fridays, they do a happy hour. So this was the party for the grand opening of the building. This was the new, Viacom building on Gower. So what Viacom did, you know, uh, Comedy Central, BET, they had lots of different facilities all around the Hollywood area, the LA, the LA area, and they did some consolidation. Now, they didn't bring all their studios in, but a lot of their executives are under this new roof on Gower and uh, just for collaboration. So uh, that's what the building was built for, 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 for corporate governance, for, for collaboration, you know, everyone under one roof. And uh, I'm texting my wife, so I got invited to the party and I, I thank my Viacom uh, buddies for doing that. And you can see top left, that is actually Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg DJed the party. The guy in white is one of his entourage. And, and I'm texting my wife. I'm like, I'm at a party with Snoop Dogg. She's like, there's no way you're cool enough to be at a party with Snoop Dogg. But you can, he's got a hoodie on. You could barely, you, he actually spoke. So he was doing um, the Martha Stewart show uh, on one of the Viacom channels, like a cooking show. He's hysterical. I saw a couple episodes where his food actually beat out Martha Stewart and she's a professional cook. Uh, the family and friends love Snoop Dogg's chicken better than his fried chicken, his grandmother's recipe than Martha Stewart's recipe. So go figure. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. That, that project was a lot of fun. But you can read more about it in the, in the uh, ebook that found and handed out. Many of you probably know of innovation already. You know, we're, uh, uh, I think of ourselves that we're a technology integrator, a systems integrator. We provide consulting, design engineering system integration, project management, warranty and support. Uh, we, we, in addition to IPTV and digital signage, uh, we're very proficient in uh, wireless communications, video, audio, data, intercom. Uh, we do a lot with bonded cellular with the high vision Abbey West products. 
Uh, we have a new product line from Mobile Viewpoint that has uh, AI driven camera systems that eliminate the need for camera operators, which is uh, getting a lot of traction right now. Um, you know, just reach out to us. Uh, here's some uh, little blurbs on some of the other projects we've done. You know, Sinclair Tennis Channel Valley, I mentioned Paramount Nick. Um, all of this will uh, give it, it takes about a week. We put the recording online, we transcode it, uh, we'll put the presentation online. Uh, the assets we handed out, if you, if you didn't download them or if you missed it, We'll put those on, on the recording uh, website for you guys to log in later. So- uh, Hey, Jim, uh, I, Jim yeah. you have a few questions. Would you like- Oh, you know, yes, to, yes. I can, uh, I can read a couple and if we, you don't have time to get through them, we can reply to them separately. But one of them was from um, somebody who asked, how do you audio watermark the content? The, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a transcoder. So, so um, typically when we're doing watermarking, we're transcoding or re-encoding. And um, uh, there, there are several ways. It, it's either some secret uh, telemetry or codes put in the vertical interval, or there's something in the corner of the video, the pixels are manipulated in a certain pattern that's not visible to the human eye. So, so th there's various techniques, and, but depending upon their requirement, um, one of the vendors that does the watermarking is ZV. I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, uh, we're a ZV partner. So, so uh, it depends on the application. It's rare that that's needed, but uh, it did come up uh, on a project where uh, 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 it was required to do the watermarking. So you, you, it, it does require a little bit of manipulation. We needed to have to transcode uh, uh, to put the watermark in. And it's usually uh, not visible, uh, or at least not to the naked eye. Okay, we'll do one more since you're running a little bit um, late here. It's um, does your digital signage have any mobile interactive capabilities like a QR code, et cetera? Yeah, I, I actually I saw that question uh, flash by. Uh, you know, we we learn a lot of things from our customers. You know, and, and our, our system is is very is very open. Now, um, you know, since our television system runs in a browser, it'll run in a browser on a phone. So there could be, you know, I, I would think of like maybe a museum application, right? It would jump into my mind. Could be a QR code. You want to find out more, or advertising. You want to find out more of what you're looking at. Go to the QR code, and that QR code could be the URL of the television or the IPTV system, and even a given channel number. Um, so, absolutely, I, I, we, we could totally do that. If if you have an application in mind to use that QR code, uh, certainly reach out to me. My my uh, contact information is up on the slide right now. You can call or call or email me. I, I love answering. I think the questions are the most important part. Uh, Fallon, are there any okay. other? Uh, yeah, of ones? course. Yeah, of course. Um, do you have a case study for a hotel application? I guess that'd be a quick answer. Uh, yes, we do. We, we have uh, presentations. Um, we've done um, uh, the Hard Rock uh, uh, Corporation bought the uh, Trump Taj Mahal and the Trump Casino in Atlantic City. Uh, and uh, they, it's, a beautiful, they, it's beautiful now. Um, you know, the, 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 the facilities were 20 years old, they needed a renovation. Uh, we did the television system for the casino floor. Um, we've done uh, many casinos, uh, several Native American owned casinos, the Point Casino, the Mystic Lake Casino, and we've done hotel rooms as well. So uh, uh, we can do, uh, I, we, I can send you some information. Uh, I'm sure uh, Fallon, I, I believe it's recorded, right? We know yep. who asked what question, so yes. we can, uh, Either myself or my colleague Rick and my colleague Rick Anderson most likely will be the one uh, following up after the show. So uh, we we can uh, uh, get you more information uh, uh, if not today, very soon. All right, you have time for one more. Sure. All right. What have been some of the challenges you have faced with rolling blackouts, and how did you resolve it? Uh, uh, rolling blackouts, I guess they mean uh, electrical uh, blackouts. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Well, yeah, you know, one um, one of our casino customers, they're, they're in a very uh, rural area. Um, I, I grew up back east. I grew up on Long Island, so I'm very used to blackouts. All the electrical lines are above ground on Long Island. So um, summertime, you know, in, in the fall and late summer, we'd have hurricanes, knock all the power lines down. In the winter, uh, ice storms uh, would come through, freeze on the lines and snap the lines. So uh, as a kid, we've always had a backup generator in, in the house because we, you might lose power for a week at a time. You know, in the middle of winter, you don't want to freeze to death. So the, what the casino ended up doing is, uh, you know, they had a lot of uh, uh, outages, interruptions. Um, they now put in, um, they now put in uh, uh, big backup generators. And the problems that we saw were, were not so much the television system. Uh, it was the, the network. So a switch wouldn't come up, but come back up correctly, or a switch would get hung up. Um, so as far as the endpoints, the TVs, the set-top boxes, those are pretty resilient. Those correct themselves. Um, so I would recommend if you have blackouts and you want to keep things running, uh, put battery UPSs on all your switches. Uh, keep the network up because uh, it, 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 99% of the time is the network. Uh, if you're using a VM server, make sure there's battery. You know, And you want it where um, uh, it's the type of backup where the system is running on the load all the time. In other words, it's a little bit more expensive. The back, you know, so in other words, there's not like a glitch. You know, you want it where it's clean power all the time. Um, um, use the more expensive battery backups on all your, your IT infrastructure on the servers for sure. Servers are, are going to be less forgiving for, you know, glitchy or, or power interruptions. You know, that's usually when something fails. The set-top boxes I'm not worried about. You know, I, I think that would be overkill putting uh, battery backup on, on a TV or a set-top box. Um, you know, and then, you know, it's just one endpoint. If one endpoint doesn't come up, somebody can go reboot that. Uh, or we, if the set-top box is online but not behaving properly, we can reboot it remotely. Uh, whereas infrastructure, the server, that's a choke point. You know, we, we, we'd want to want to take care of that. So that would be my recommendation in any kind of an install, you know, uh, have power conditioning, power backup on, on, on um, have a good UPS on any of the critical elements of your infrastructure. All right, one more here. Um, for productions that are only on location, what hardware is used to allow executives to watch on their mobile device? I can... So yeah, I, I think that might kind of that might bridge into the uh, production world. Um, so so if I understand correct, and we do have technology for that. So uh, a lot of times we call it remote directing. So uh, if I'm understanding the correct the question correctly, uh, we would use our bonded cellular technology. So if it's a live show, your cameras go live we do an at-home production, cameras go live, they ISO the feeds, home run the feeds back to master control, produce the show from home. But I think this question is maybe it's a scripted show, they're recording in camera, but they want execs to see, you know, exec doesn't have to be sitting behind in the video village to watch what's going on on site, they're at home in their office or they're, they're, at, they're, at, their, at their home home. Uh, so uh, we, we would put bonded cellular technology on or near the camera. And a lot of times we just take the viewfinder output of the camera and feed that back to the executives. And then that could be fed into a television system uh, either at home or on campus for distribution. So hopefully that answers the question. I, I think we would use a bonded cellular piece if I'm understanding correctly to get the camera feeds uh, out of the uh, remote production location. So uh, if I misunderstood that, you know, when we get, when, when Rick follows up with you guys and gals uh, on your questions, uh, we can clarify those things. Uh, you can reach me, jim at vidovation.com or at 949-777-5435. Jim Jaquetta, if you Google my name, it'll come up on social media. So 
Um, thanks everyone for, for joining. And oh, I just see my email alerts went into the feed. Oops, I hope that wasn't sitting there too long. <laughs> um, uh, thanks everyone, have a great day and thanks for joining. Thanks, Valentine.